In today's latest news, we discuss the breaking reports around Jude Bellingham as it seems like Todd Bowley and Mr. Egbali won't be giving up and trying to sign Bellingham in the summer. And of course, to end things, we discuss Romelu Lukaku's future and Jao Felix as it does seem like possibly is there a swap deal on the cards in the summer for Atleti to sign Lukaku and for us to sign Felix on a permanent. Right now, my friends, you know, I had an amazing holiday, but I'm very excited now to be coming back, making content, making videos. Of course, it's been quite hard not being able to talk football when I've been away for the past 11 days, but I'm back right now. I hope you guys have missed me and I hope you guys are happy to see me again. So if you're happy with the videos, hit that like button. Let's go over 1500 likes for today's video. And without wasting any more time, let's get into things and let's discuss the first story from today's news. Let's start things off and let's discuss the news that Matt Law broke late last night. And I guess to no surprise of anyone in the fan base, we still have major hopes to try and sign Jude Bellingham in the summer. Now, we accept that there will be a ton of variables and difficulties working against us that will make trying to sign Bellingham incredibly hard. At this point in time, the strategy for our summer window is to sign a few more key positions to complete this squad and complete this team. That's a new goalkeeper, that's a new midfield player, and that's a new striker. Well, the top priorities for business this summer. Now, before I continue on with the news, one thing I want to reiterate again is the fact that you know, as I mentioned the January window, do not be surprised if we end up selling common grads. I'm looking at guys like Breuer and Conor Gallagher as prime examples at this point in time. And the major reason behind why is that these guys have no transfer costs behind them. We produce them for free. This is 100% pure and free profit. And we may consider selling them if we don't secure Champions League football. So it's nice to see that Matt Law is also confirming this theory that I thought was actually gonna be a possibility. Still though, getting back to Bellingham, we accept that clubs like Real Madrid, Liverpool and Man City may have an advantage over us at this point in time. And of course, naturally, if we miss out on securing Champions League football, that could work so hard against us if we have any hopes of signing Bellingham in the summer. Now for me, after seeing the incredible things this board has done in the January window, I've got a bit of hope. And in regards to Jude Bellingham, not only has there been long-term club interest for the player for how many years now? I mean, back uh, when he was like still like a very young team, we had hopes of trying to sign him and bring him to Cobham. He's been on the club's radar for a long time. And Bowley, Igbali, have been in constant communication with Bellingham's parents' team over the past year. The reality is though, is that it seems incredibly likely that Bellingham will be finally leaving Dortmund in this summer window. And you'd imagine naturally after they saw the amount of money we spent to sign Enzo Fernandez in January. I mean, for God's sake, he was at Benfica for literally less than six months. And we spent 10 times the value that Benfica originally spent to sign Enzo to begin with. So this gives Dortmund like a foundation, a threshold to know, okay, this is the bare minimum we accept. And we feel like Bellingham is a better player. And we feel like we can command even more money considering every massive club in European football is after him. Even though we're fans and, you know, we want to see clubs uh, being successful, winning trophies, doing all the sporting things. At the end of the day, football clubs are still a business. And Borussia Dortmund's business over the past 10 years has been absolutely out of this world in regards to the amount of money they will be receiving and have been receiving for selling young star talents to the big clubs in Europe. It's definitely a model more clubs are adopting, uh, most notably Brighton in the Premier League. It is going to be very hard to sign Bellingham. There were some premature reports that came out suggesting that Bellingham is not interested in signing for us because he doesn't feel safe about the project to hand, but we all know that's absolute nonsense. That's just some poor reporting. And I'll give you guys some context behind transfer news and football stories in general. A lot of times, journalists will sit on stories for a long time because you have to think about it from a business point of view. You want to release your stories when it's the most optimum time you can. And I even learned this the hard way myself. Like back during the early days of my channel, I wanted to do a lot of in the know stuff. Uh, during the Sari saga, I was breaking a lot of stories about what the negotiations were for Sari, but they never necessarily got the views I always kind of hoped they would get. And it kind of made sense in hindsight because there was no traction to begin with. There was no interest there. I was just a random guy putting stories out. And it's just like, I was kind of undermining the uh, ability for me to get more views in that sense, if you know what I mean. So I want to provide you guys some context behind how the industry does work, not just with YouTubers, but also with actual journalists in the game 
as well too but regardless i need to give some thoughts and opinions behind the story and i can't help but think about the business i was seeing in january and the magical stuff that Boli a body were doing throughout that month it still feels surreal to me i'm still actively on twitter looking at the pictures of these new signings still not being able to fully comprehend that we actually secured the guys who are currently playing for us you know what i love too yeah these guys negotiate with some of the most notoriously difficult uh, board members in European football. I mean, for God's sake, we signed Gusto from Olas of Lyon in the final moments of the January window. We signed Enzo Fernandez from Rui Costa and Benfica are notoriously difficult to negotiate with because they want the premium optimum rates to sell their players. And the most gas one out of all of them, in my personal opinion, was how we signed Mudrik from Sergi Palkin's Chata Donetsk. <laughs> like, we know that Egg Bali literally landed straight in Ukraine. He went to the Shakhtar Donetsk Hotel. He bailed Palkin and he said, I'm here now. Palkin's like, where? What do you mean? I'm at your hotel, let's talk business. Like, how can you not be gassed by that? I'll give these Americans credit, yeah? Because when it comes to doing business, when it comes to doing like peak capitalism, these guys don't play around and these guys are the real deal. And now with reports linking us to guys like Rice or Simhen, Bellingham, I mean, you're dealing with Brady, you're dealing with De Laurentiis, and you're dealing with Vatska as well too. With this new board and transfer team we have, I think we can do the impossible every single time and we have an incredible advantage when it comes to negotiating with difficult clubs. Still though, before I end this report, I've got a few more thoughts and opinions. Personally, I do feel like if you are really serious about making a big move for Drew Bellingham, this is gonna cause shock waves in the squad. I'm looking at guys like Kovacic, I'm looking at guys like Mason Mount now because Bellingham, is seen as the upgrades and if you're signing him he will be getting those minutes over players like this so it is something to think about i don't think this board is afraid at all to make these strong changes because they have the money and the expertise to make this stuff happen but for my final thought it is a little bit outside the box but i kind of want to present a thought for all of us to kind of think about and i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions behind this my question is and a thought i'm having is is there a limit to the amount of stars you can have in a squad and a team at the same time. I look at a Bellingham and there's so many variables behind how we could use him and what the plan would be for the long term future. Would we be a 4-3-3 team? Would it be a 4-2-3-1? With, would it be Enzo and Bellingham in that pivot together? I don't know why I'm doing this and I prefer that they're doing this for the opposition compared to each other to begin with. But anyway, let's stay on topic. And as I said in my original question, is there a limit to the amount of stars you have? Because you have to deep what a star does and what they bring. Star players, they take X responsibility. They make magical things happen. They're the guys who aren't afraid to be a bit individualistic and take that long shot outside the books. Try and play that pass. Try and drive forward. Try and do something with imagination. Is there a possibility that with the more stars you're adding to a team, it creates this sense of like a diminishing return in the sense that some of these guys will have to sacrifice their instincts to be the star, to be that leader for the sake of team balance, unity and structure. Like, can I expect a human being to adopt like, I don't know, like computer-like precision when it comes to doing the optimum, most efficient thing in a game at every single time alongside other top stars that also match winners in their own right? I don't have an answer if I'm keeping things real. It's still more of a thought and an idea. I guess it's just something to think about and I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. So. That's the first story out of the way. Let's end things now by discussing Lukaku and Jao Felix. Now, there's many interesting stories coming out around Lukaku and Felix. We start with Lukaku first, and currently, we know that he has difficulties with his loan spell at Inter Milan. Inter spent nearly 20 million to have this guy on loan for one season, and naturally, they signed a Lukaku who was still feeling the repercussions of the injuries, lack of form, and fitness issues, of course, that he was suffering with since before the season started. His season return back to Inter hasn't necessarily gone to plan, and with the added pressure that Inter don't necessarily have those finances to be taking real gambles anymore, there's a strong possibility that they may not be able to keep Lukaku for another long year. Now, I know Lukaku is a bit of a dirty name in the fan base. I got my own personal thoughts and opinions. On one hand, I got a bit of sympathy, but it's like, this is the nature of the game at this level. There's so much competition. There's so many new stars coming out and forming every season where at the highest level, it takes just one season to slip off and multiple seasons to come back. So if Inter Milan don't finalize the full permanent move for Lukaku, I mean, what do we do now? Well, in steps Atletico Madrid because reports are suggesting that they are 
really monitoring and looking very closely at Lukaku. And I think for them, there's some great business reasons behind why he's worth taking that gamble at this point in time. Because as clubs know across the world, if we don't get Champions League football on top as well too, we must sell. There'll be like a slight sense of desperation to sell. And when you're kind of vulnerable like that in the market, other clubs can capitalize and they understand this and we can probably get the best possible deal ever, knowing the fact that you have to sell. Lukaku's transfer value will never get anywhere near close to 100 million again. You're looking at figures between 40 to hopefully at least, I don't know, 60, 50 million at this point in time. And I guess for us, what helps is the fact that we have a certain Mr. Jao Felix. Now you guys know in the summer my excitement and gas that I had for this guy. And it says, I, I still can't believe this guy is playing for Chelsea. Like this is the guy on every FIFA, where he's one of the best guys in the game. Like 91 ratings at the end. I think he's our best player. I, I know I could be sounding a bit mad, but I need to be honest with my audience. And I, and I just have that type of feeling. And it's just like, he brings the fantasy, the magic. He is like on that Neymar family of player where they're just so technically brilliant that, you know, they're kind of unplayable. They're, they're, they're kind of uncoachable. Like you just create the conditions for them to play and you let these guys do the rest. Now, some reports are suggesting that Alessi are hoping to earn around at least 120 mil for Felix. I mean, of course, they signed him for big money. They want to return back. But realistically, that is not going to happen. Of course, with Simeone, who's most likely now to be staying at Atletico Madrid. This will further push Felix away from returning back to Atletico and knowing the fact that this guy is enjoying his best life in Cobham and at Chelsea right now. I mean, new teammates, you're seeing that budding friendship with Enzo Fernandez. Of course, like-minded players, same age as him as well too. Like, honestly, these, these young guys are living like the dream right now. And for me, I think Felix can be the cream of the top and be one of the top five players in world football. I mean, he's caught the fantasy and eye of Todd Bowley naturally. I mean, the guy has played 135 minutes worth of football for us. And look at the instant impact and quality upgrade he's bringing to this team right now. Now, reports are saying that we're hoping to sign him for around 80 million euros, which is around 70 million pounds. For me, that is a lot fairer of a valuation because his market value is nowhere near 120 million at this point in time. And if uh, let's see, want Lukaku and we want Jao Felix, naturally, there will be a deal struck to make this happen and get both moves over the line. Personally, I feel confident. Personally, him and Kunku, Mudrik, all these guys can play together. I'll do separate videos about that in the future. But right now, for me, I think Jao Felix typifies the excitement I have around this club right now because this is a caliber of guy that we rarely are able to sign right to the team. So right now, my friends, that is the end of today's video. Make sure you guys watch the Champions League game against Dortmund with me on a watch long stream later tonight. And of course, check the match review coming out later, literally under an hour after the game finishes. So I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.